Greetings, everyone. Nathan Nerdark here from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and with me, I have two nerds. Nerdark is Ted. Nerdark is Dave. And today we ask sci fi RPGs. Aren't they just DD in space? Hey, guys, jump down in the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter. It's a great way to game with to learn how to game with us as well as get great gaming tips. My gal, gamer gal, Vex had asked hit me up on Facebook and had asked about the difference between running sci-fi versus a fantasy game and ga- as the game master. And I believe I believe she's talking about running a Star Wars game and she's a little concerned and intimidated with putting together that type of adventure as opposed to running a fantasy adventure. Now, I can understand that from a standpoint of an old school fantasy adventure is tends to be rather linear in design. Uh, you're creating a, du- a dungeon, there's a plot, you know, whatever that dungeon can, might be. Now, there, there's, there's two things here. One is, if you're creating a linear type adventure, it can actually be done either way. It doesn't really matter. A dungeon can be anything, is kind of what I explained. But the other thing is, I, the thing that can be intimidating is if you're running a sandbox style game, If you're running that game in a fantasy world, it's so much smaller, right? Uh There's only so far the players can go. You can only travel so fast. Right, you know, without excessive amounts of magic and high magic. Where in a a, a science fiction game like Star Wars where you have hyperdrives, you know, your sandbox just got a whole lot bigger. So I can understand how it could be intimidating. But in essence, a good... Game Master, Dungeon Master, is aware not only of what plots and things that they have going on, but what the players have a design to do. And that could be through knowing what the party's goals are or what the player's goals are, or a combination of that and communication with the players. Hey guys, what do you want to do tomorrow? What do you want to do in the next session? By knowing what that is, you have the ability to prepare your material for whatever game. Now, they might change it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As my players are wont to do. It's a little game we like to play amongst ourselves. Yeah, we but, don't tell Ted about it. <laughs> when the players and the DM's plans meet. <laughs> but anytime you're, you're prepping material, you're going to prep your NPCs, you're going to prep your encounters, you're going to prep whatever accoutrements you might need. Yeah, those are all similarities. And it doesn't matter whether you're prepping it for a fantasy game or whether you're prepping it for a modern game or a sci-fi game. One of the things to keep in mind, right, the adventure and party is kind of the core core basis for an event for running a fantasy game. Well, if you look at it, if you look at something like Firefly, or you look at Star Wars, or you look at the Away Team, they have the same dynamic as an adventuring party. Sure, you know it may look a little bit different. They might have little, different roles according to, to you know, to the setting, but at the at the same time, it still automatically creates this like adventuring party environment for you. So you just have to equate that from science fiction to fantasy, and and, and find those analogies that you can use. As Ted was saying, you know, by knowing what plots your players are looking to do or goals are looking to achieve by putting out those plot threads you're going to have a greater likelihood of your characters not going off the rails and going in the direction you want them to go the one of the hardest thing about putting hooks out for players is when you put your own hooks out you you don't you know it's a 50 50 whether they're going to bite or not Mm -hmm. if you put out the hooks that they bait it they're almost guaranteed to bite every time when you're when you're looking at as you uh at session prep for sci-fi you know you'd brought up firefly or star trek's away team you know i would look at if you're specifically looking for star wars i would look at rebels look at you've got this tight-knit group of people that have to work together as a team to work out these kind of missions now i don't know what the scope of your campaign arc is or why this group is together but that tying thread is your key that's what you're going to want to need to make sure stays to stays together so that you can have them keep revolving around that same central plot or thread now you guys haven't seen it yet but by i'm sure one of you is by the time this video is live will rogue one does the same thing it creates that same dynamic that you can oh well that's the adventuring party that makes it kind of easy 
All right, there's similarities uh, that I find in both those games. I feel like Session Zero is really important, like you guys were mentioning. Uh, I feel like the characters' goals, they're gonna, you're going to want characters to have something that you're going to go along with, like they would say, baiting the hooks that they, that they throw out themselves. I think of this adventure, I think if you think of it as a sea, a sea campaign, like in a fantasy sea campaign, is a similar, very similar to being out on the ocean of space. So you have this idea, players aren't just going to go willy-nilly anywhere. They're going to go where you kind of give them information on because otherwise they're just kind of not charting a course or just going off into the ocean. And most people that do that are going to just die. So you, because you have resources, you know, hyperdrive and other things like that, or faster than light travel, those all have resource use. So you don't want to just go off someplace, not really know where you're going. So it's, sand, it's sandboxy in a way because you, they, they can kind of do anything or you want to show them that they could do anything, but they're not just going to be like, yep, yeah, that second start of the right, let's do that. It was cool in Star Trek. <laughs> so let's do it now. If you kind of give that kind of mentality of a seafaring campaign, you're not just going to go off into the wilderness. So Nate, so. you brought you brought up a good point, and that is the the hidden character is the ship absolutely needs to be taken into account when you're doing a, a sci-fi game. And there's times that you need to muck with that. You need to have something happen, and tonight's adventure is all about the ship. They can't get on. They can't get off. You know, they, something broke. They need to get it fixed. These are great ways to use that that central piece that, for everything else, has been unchanging, unwavering. Damn, I'm trying to think of the uh, the fl- Firefly episode. I don't I don't remember the name name of. Uh, but you know what episode? I'm oh, absolutely. About. I'm sure yeah. Everybody who's watching, you guys probably know. But yeah, and here's the other thing: like, if you need, if you need help in expanding your horizons with running a science fiction game, but you're used to running fantasy, you know, replace magic and mysticism with technology. technology. Repl- you know, your dungeons are derelict ships, uh, space stations, the Death Star. Jedi Temple, Sith Temple, inside a giant purple worm thing, <laughs> inside a giant purple worm thing, like all you know, all of these things. It could be the dun- the quote unquote unquote dungeon, or it could honestly be a dungeon. <laughs> it, yes, if you need if you need that kind of thing to help you as a game master uh, spread your wings. In our Star Wars game, Scott Garibay had used um, what is it? What's her name? Maz. Maz Kanata, yeah. Maz Kanata's uh, cantina as an actual dungeon, and that we had to go and explore, right? Because we and retrieve we had, artifacts from. We we had taken our campaign arc was immediately preceding force awakens in the movie the the cantina was attacked and therefore it was left in in rubble we had to go in and investigate it's the opposite of proceeding the after seating yeah (laughs) proceeding yeah sorry it it happened immediately afterward you know also like we we went and looked for a uh the the cloning station right and that like even though we didn't actually enter it that would have been a similar thing see i used to write out my adventures and i would write out you know very similar to a lot of uh the old school modules and it's kind of like step 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 right but later as i i started writing my adventures i made them like flow charts every choice that you make has possibilities now your players may not even choose any of those they might do something completely different but if you just have in your mind kind of like these options even if it's even if you don't have things statted out in mechanics at least you have a, a direction that your mind is already moving in towards they, they, that that helps with improv mm-hmm. but if you if you have blank slate it's going to be a lot tougher and i would say look at some normal like pop culture stuff like if you watch firefly or i'm thinking of cowboy bebop some of the adventures some of those episodes happened on the ship it's kind of like the ship is either as a combination of terrain slash weather slash random encounters that stuff can happen and then you know like a, a derelict ship or something is the dungeon so if you can pick out in like the episode you watch of those different sci-fi shows what's the dungeon what's the hook what's the weather or terrain difficulty something that happens on the ship stuff like that like a wagon wheel breaking well our warp drive doesn't work you know something's happened or right. we entered some weird spot in space you know all that stuff that's just the words used to describe the general you know tropes of what happens on an adventure well and also too like any those iconic movies or, or media you know the enterprise millennium falcon 
uh, uh, Serenity, they all become this extra character, like Ted said, in the game. It, and it happened in our Star Wars game. We had the Star Kraken, and that Star Kraken was really, really <laughs> important to certain characters in the game. Where, th oddly enough, other characters had ships, right? But they were just geared to them. Right. Where our ship was like, oh no, like we will. We, 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 we will lay down the law for this and we will we will sac we will make many sacrifices to preserve this thing right and and I feel like that's what you kind of want in a star in a starfaring game anyway because that's your way of getting around at your home like it becomes so important and it's more than just a means it's alive it's a it's it's home look you know you look at Star Trek look at all the episodes that have taken place just in the holodeck like that, you know, that's a really cool thing. Or, you know, if you look at other episodes where something happens with a ship, where the ship gets taken over, becomes sentient, like there's all these other things that can happen. Oh, you know, going back to Force Awakens, what does is, what is Han say when he gets back to the Millennium Falcon? Oh, it feels we're like home. we're home. Or we're, no, home. We're, yeah. we're home. Please. <laughs> Rogue One has been released. It's been a year since Force Awakens. If you out. haven't seen it, you're not a real fan. That's yeah. what Scott, Gar Scott Garibay would say. <laughs> But they just what if they were in a coma. <laughs> well, then they shouldn't be watching YouTube. They should be watching Force Awakens. Yeah, you should have got woken up, got on some clothes, and went and stayed on it. There is a plethora of ways that you can run your sci-fi game, and really, it doesn't really run any different than than a fantasy game. It's just the your your dressings are different. You know, mm -hmm. it looks different. And the fun thing about fantasy, too, depending on what kind of world you're playing in, I mean, not fantasy, but about sci-fi, is you can actually have fantasy elements in it. You, and I mean, you can do the same thing with fantasy, but it doesn't work in nearly as well. I, you, know, I, I, you know, look at Star Wars. Star it's, Wars really is less science fiction and more science fantasy exactly. anyway because you have the Force, which is very much a mysticism, and you could literally replace magic with that. It's D&D in space, pretty much, in a sense. You know? Yeah, you know, and, and there's, there's, there's other tropes that are kind of similar, like Warhammer, uh, 40K, and you could probably go on and on. But the question is... How do you guys run your science fiction games, and how do you differentiate between between that and fantasy, or do you even? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. Patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. You can tweet at us, at Nerdarchy. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.